This video is part one in a two-part series on SharePoint list views. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about what views are, how they work, and then I'm going to demonstrate how you can create a list type view and how you can build in various filter conditions on your list type views. In part two of the series, I will demonstrate how you can incorporate grouping, sorting, and aggregate functions in list type views. Then I'll demonstrate how you can edit, delete, and share views. And then we'll end off by looking at how you can create gallery and board type views. Let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, now you can see here that I am on a SharePoint list called sales data. Now this list is being used to track information about customer sales. And you can see here that this list features several different column types. Now, in order to create or modify views in a SharePoint list, what you want to do is you want to click into the switch view options menu that appears in the upper right hand side of the SharePoint online interface. Now, you can see here that once you click the switch view options menu, a drop down menu will display. And this is where you can come to create new views to edit the current view, to format the current view, add or remove fields, etc. Now, before I show you how to create a new view, I do want to draw your attention to the fact that there are three pre-configured view options available in all SharePoint lists by default. Now you can see here that I am currently on the list view, and this will just display your data in this tabular view. You also have the compact list view, and I'll go ahead and click on this. And you can see here that this just condenses the list to be able to display more row data on your screen. And if I click back into the switch view options menu, you can also set your views to a gallery. Now I'll go ahead and click on this. And essentially what the gallery view does is it displays your items as cards that you can just click into to actually bring up the edit item menu. All right, now to create a new view, you wanna click on the switch view options menu and you wanna click on the create new view option. This will bring up the create view menu. Next, you want to give your view a name. Now you can see here, I've called this view electronic sales. And next you have to select your view type. Now you'll notice that you have four different view types that you can select. You have a list view, which is the tabular view that you can see here in the background on the screen. You have a calendar view, which will allow you to display your items on a calendar. Now, I will not be covering how to create a calendar view in this tutorial. If you are interested in learning how to do that, I have an entirely separate tutorial that demonstrates how you can create a calendar in a SharePoint online list, and that is using this calendar view type. I've included a link to that video in the description below. Next, you can select a gallery view, which is the view that displays the items as cards. And the last type is a board view that allows you to display your item data in a Kanban board style view. Next, you want to set whether you would like to make this view public or private. Now, a public view means that anybody who has permission to access the list will be able to select and apply that view to your item data. If you uncheck this option, this means that you are creating a private view that will only be accessible by you. Next, you wanna click on the Create button, and you can see here that our view is created. Now you can tell that our view has been created because you can see in the switch view options menu, it now reads electronic sales. And if I click on this, you can see here that it appears in the view list. Now, really important note, whenever you create a SharePoint online list, a default view will be created and the name of that default view is all items. So if you're seeing a list that has the view all items, that is the standard view that just displays all columns with no filtering or sorting applied by default. All right, now once you create a new view to edit it, you wanna click on the switch view options menu and you want to click on edit current view. Now the very first thing that you can do when building out custom views is hide and show columns and you can also change the column order or position. Now to do that, you want to come into the columns 
group. And you can see here that this will display a list of all of the columns included in your SharePoint list. And to the left of the column name, you can see this checkbox that reads display. Now, if this is checked, that means that the column will be featured or displayed on your list. And if it's unchecked, it means that the column will be hidden. Now, on the right of the column name, you have the position from the left. And you can see here that this is simply a drop down menu with the numbers 1 to 42 or however many columns you have in your list. You can simply select the position that you would like this column to be featured in and it will update accordingly. Now, for example, if I wanted customer name to appear first in my list, I can set this to one and you can see here that invoice number automatically changed to position two. Now you can see here that I've gone ahead and hidden several columns and that I've also changed the order of these columns. Now for demonstration purposes, I'll go ahead and show you how this will apply when you actually commit this change. Now to do that, you can scroll either to the top or the bottom and click OK. And you can see here that the view has updated and it has now hidden the columns that I unchecked the display option for. And it has also reordered these columns to display them in the order that I configured. Now here's a tip when it comes to changing the column order. You can do that from the edit view menu, or if you just want to move things around, you can actually just drag and drop the columns into the desired position. Now let's say I want to move the product category column to appear after the customer country column. I can simply click and hold this column and I can now move this into a different position. Now I'll go ahead and drop it right after the customer country column. And you can see here that it says view saved. This will actually save that change in the view so that when you navigate away from your list and come back, that updated column ordering will be remembered. All right, next we're going to look at how you can use views to help filter your lists to display only a subset of data. Now I've clicked into an item here and we'll start off with a very simple filter. I'm going to scroll down and I have a series of choice type fields. You can see here I have a product category field and that has three options, electronics, fitness and health. We're going to look at how you can build a view that would filter this list to display only those items that have a product category of electronics. Now, if you're finding this video helpful, then you might also be interested in my SharePoint list fundamentals on demand course that I am going to be launching in the coming weeks. Now, whether you're new to SharePoint lists or you're an experienced user, this course will have something in it for you. It will cover the basics from creating lists and columns right through to more advanced topics like SharePoint list permissions. Now you can get early access and unlock early bird pricing by simply clicking the link that I've included in the description of this video below to get yourself on the wait list. Now, once you sign up for the wait list, you wanna make sure that you confirm your email address and you wanna make sure that you add my email address to your favorite so that you don't miss out on the launch announcement when I send it. Now let's get back to the video. All right, you can see here, I've navigated to the edit view screen and I will scroll down and you'll notice here that you have a group called filter. Now this is where you can come to build out the various filters that you might need to apply to your list. Now to build out filters, what you want to do is select this option here that says show items only when the following is true. And you'll notice here that you have this other option that reads show items when column and then some drop downs. Now the first thing that you'll want to do is select the column that you would like to filter on. Now I'll click in this drop down and I will search for my product category field. Next you can select your operator. Now I'll click in this drop down, and you can see here that you have a bunch of different operators. Now these operators help you define what conditions need to be met in order to display specific data. Now you can see here is equal to, is not equal to, you have operators that pertain to numbers, is greater than or is less than, or between, 
And then you have operators that you can use to actually build filters based on searching for things like specific text strings. Now for the purposes of this example, I'll select is equal to, and then in the value field, I'm going to go ahead and type in my value. And you can see here that I've typed in electronics. Now we'll come back and look at how to build out some additional examples. And for now, I'll just scroll to the very bottom here and I'll click OK. Now you might notice from time to time that when you're building views that they don't kick in right away. Now you can see here as I save the change, it brought me back into my list, but it hasn't yet filtered the product category column. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and refresh my page. And simply by refreshing the page, you can see now that this list has been filtered and it's only displaying the rows or items where the product category is electronics. All right, now before we move on, I've brought up the SharePoint list filtering help documentation, and there are some basic filtering rules that are important to know when you're building out your view filters. Now, first and foremost, if you are working with large lists with lots of data, what you might want to consider is creating indexes on columns that you'll be frequently using to filter your data. Now, an index is something that you can implement on up to 20 columns in your SharePoint list or even a library. And essentially what it does is help improve data retrieval performance. Now, the next filtering rule that's important to consider is that your views can only have a maximum of 10 filter statements. So you want to keep that in mind. If you try to exceed more than 10 filter statements, you are going to receive an error. And the next filtering rule, as you can see here, pertains to the use of both the AND and OR operators. Now, as you'll see in the next example that I'll cover, I'll be mixing both AND and OR operators in my filter definitions. And you can see that the statement reads that all of the OR statements have to come first. You cannot mix the AND and OR statements in your filter definition. All right, now I've gone ahead and created a new view. And next I'm going to demonstrate how you can build out a view that has up to four or five different filters. Now you can see here, I'm still filtering on the two product category values that I demonstrated earlier in the tutorial. Now, in order to add additional column filters, what you want to do is click on the show more columns button. And you can see that doing that added an additional column filter drop down here. Now you can see here, I've added the additional conditions. And so this view is saying display only those items where the product category is either electronics or fitness and where the customer country is Canada or the USA and where the customer tier is VIP and where the total for the particular order is greater than $100. Next, I'll go ahead and click OK. And you can see here that the list has now been reduced. So you can see here that the product category is fitness or electronics. The customer tier is VIP. The country is either USA or Canada, and the total for all of these orders is greater than or equal to $100. All right, now the last filter condition that we'll look at is filtering based on text strings. Now you can see here I've built out a filter that says display only those items whose product description contains the word head. Now, when it comes to filtering based on the text strings, you can either filter on contains or begins with. Now, begins with means that it will look for the string that you are filtering on at the start of your column. And if it's not found, then it will not return any list items. Contains means that it will actually search for your parameter through the entire field value and return something even with a partial match. Now I'll go ahead and save this. And you can see here that our filter returned three items where the product description features the word headphones. And again, you can see here that it returned these items even though there is another string value before the word head. 
So that is the difference between begins with and contains. Contains will search for your filter value in the entire value that is in the specific field that you're filtering on. So that is it for part one of my two part series on SharePoint list views. Now, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and be sure to enable notifications so that you're notified when the second part of this video goes live. You'll also want to check out the description of this video below as I will be posting a link to the second part once it is published. I'm Louis Acabellas. Thanks for stopping by and see you in the next video.